Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. On today's lesson, we're going to take a look at coordination and subordination. Yes, some writing tips. So let's get started. Coordination and subordination are tools for structuring sentences to clarify the relationships among the ideas wanting to convey. By using them effectively, these tools add grace and energy to your writing and help your readers follow your train of thought. So on today's agenda, we have identifying coordination and subordination using coordination and subordination. And within that, we're going to look at using coordination to combine ideas of equal importance, avoiding a faulty or excessive coordination, using coordination for ideas of an equal importance, avoiding faulty or excessive subordination. And finally, we're going to take a look at using coordination and subordination to combine short, choppy sentences. So let's start with the first uh, topic, identifying coordination and subordination. Coordination gives two or more ideas equal weight. So for example, we have the sentence, the sky grew dark, comma, and the wind began to howl. So we have a coordinating conjunction right here. Can you see it? Yes, that is and. So if we didn't have ands, we can even write something like the sky grew dark, period. The wind began to howl, period. Two equivalent ideas, right? So to put them together, we just add a, a coordinating conjunction like and, and we add a comma. Don't forget that. Another one, the newlyweds were poor, but happy. So that, that is the same to say the newlyweds were poor, period. The newlyweds were happy, right? So if we wanted to join those two sentences, we just add a comma and we add a coordinating conjunction like but. And there we have it. They are e equivalent ideas. Subordination makes one idea depend on another and is therefore used to combine ideas that are not of equal importance. So yes, that's why we have subordinating conjunctions, like for example, because, right? So we have a subordinate idea because the storm knocked the power out, and then we have a comma right there, don't forget that. The main idea would be we ate dinner by candlelight, we need a subordinate idea to be included in a main idea, so an independent clause, right? So in other words, a subordinate idea is a dependent clause and not an independent one. Then, using coordination and subordination. Using coordination to combine ideas of equal importance. Coordination should be used only when two or more ideas deserve equal emphasis. You can use coordination to join phrases and words within clauses, or to join two or more independent clauses, like this example. The auditorium was huge and acoustically imperfect. So we have huge like a word, right? Huge is an adjective. Acoustically imperfect, that's a phrase, that's um, an adjective phrase, because we have acoustically, which is an adverb, imperfect, and, and that's an adjective, right? Adverb, adjective. So coordinating words and phrases, they are huge and acoustically imperfect, within a clause, right? And a clause is this one, the independent clause, which is a sentence. Join them with a coordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunction would be here and, right? So that's clear, and you do that easily. To coordinate two or more independent clauses, use a comma plus a coordinating conjunction, like this one. The tenor bellowed loudly, comma, 
but no one in the back could hear him. So that means that I could have two independent clauses, two different sentences, and or we can add a coordinating conjunction like but and add a comma. Correlative conjunctions are also used to coordinate words, phrases, and independent clauses, like in the following example. The scholarship included not only full tuition, comma, but also money for living expenses. So here you need to pay attention because the first one is the main clause or the main idea. The scholarship included not only full tuition, but also money for living expenses. That's not uh, an independent clause. You need that um, with, um, with an independent clause, right? So um, we have a correlative conjunction, not only, but also, and we can join them together and make a full sentence. Next point, avoiding faulty or excessive coordination. Excessive coordination occurs when writers use coordination to string together too many ideas at once. Like in this long, long sentence, you will see there are a lot of uh, coordinating conjunctions and uh, they are joined by also a comma, not a period. The speedy hare challenged the plodding tortoise to a race and immediately established a large early lead, but his initial burst of speed tired him and feeling sure of himself, he decided to rest a bit before finishing the race, but he fell asleep and the tortoise passed him and won. Well, that's a very long sentence and it's kind of, let me tell you, I get lost, right? If we want to um, create a more smooth writing, then we need to edit it. And so this is the revised version. The speedy hare challenged the plodding tortoise to a race, period. That's a complete thought. The hare established a large early lead, but his initial burst of speed tired him, period. Feeling sure of himself, he decided to rest a bit before finishing the race, period. He fell asleep and then we added a subordinating conjunction, however, and the tortoise pass him and won. You have the little story complete without repeating uh, so many coordinating conjunctions, right? Now, let's take a look at the next point using subordination for ideas of unequal importance. Subordination should be used to indicate that information is of secondary importance and to show its logical relation to the main idea. So for example, the police arrived and the burglars ran away. This is a very common um, sentence, right? Um, it is correct. However, um, it is better to add a subordinating conjunction like when to mean that is of secondary importance. Like when the police arrived, what happened, right? I want to know what happened. The burglars ran away. That is very important. The main uh, clause is the burglars ran away. The secondary sentence is when the police arrived. So I could even write something like the burglars ran away when the police arrived. And that is a complete uh, sentence and it makes sense, right? Instead of writing, of writing something like the police arrived and the burglars ran away, right? Put secondary ideas in subordinate clauses introduced by a relative pronoun or a subordinating conjunction, like who, whom, that, which, whose, etc. The blue liquid must be kept at room temperature. It will be added to a beaker later. Mm. So let's change that and the revised version will be something like the blue liquid, comma, which will be added to a beaker later, comma, must be kept at room temperature. You can see that I added, which will be added to a beaker later, um, in the middle of the sentence. And I added um, two commas, right? Um, before and after. Just to show um, uh, a secondary idea 
to the one that I want to say, right? That I really want to say, which is the main idea. So the blue liquid must be kept at room temperature. That is your main idea, your main clause right there. Secondary idea will be, which will be added to the beaker later. So another point that I wanted to say about this is to put secondary ideas in a positive phrases. A positive rename nouns or pronouns and appear right after the word they rename. So for example, Canada is a strong proponent of multilateralism. And then I have another sentence like Canada is one of nearly 40 middle powers. How about if I add that before, just to add an positive um, to the, the main idea that I want to say, right? The main point that I want to say. So one of nearly 40 middle powers, comma, Canada is a strong proponent of multilateralism. Let's talk about the next point, avoiding faulty or excessive subordination, making major ideas the focus. Major ideas belong in main clauses, obviously, right? Not in subordinate clauses or phrases where readers are unlikely to give them the attention they deserve. So for example, this is this sentence you will see will have a faulty subordination. Literacy, which has been defined as the ability to talk intelligently about many topics, is highly valued by business people as well as academics. So a revised version would be highly valued by business people and academics, okay? Literacy has been defined as the ability to talk intelligently about many topics. And that sounds much better, right? Literacy has been defined as the ability to talk intelligently about many topics would be your main clause, your main clause. And then your subordinate clause would be highly valued by business people and academics. When you subordinate one idea to another, choose a subordinating word that correctly and unambiguously expresses the logical relationship between two ideas, like in this example. So since she won re-election, mm, the mayor has acted on her plan to increase salaries for town officials. That's faulty. Why? I'll show you the edited uh, version. Oh, since winning re-election, comma, the mayor has acted to increase salaries for town officials. So the mayor has acted to increase salaries for town officials is your main idea, your main clause. And then since winning re-election, that would be your subordinating clause. Don't forget that since is a subordinate conjunction, right? So needs since plus ing, right? The last point that I want to talk about is using coordination and subordination to combine short, choppy sentences. Short sentences are easy to read, but several of them in a row can become so monotonous that meaning gets lost. So, for example, my cousin Jan is not an accountant. Nevertheless, he does my taxes every year. He suggests various deductions. These deductions reduce my tax bill considerably. That's very choppy. So if we wanted to edit that one, we would use subordination to combine a series of short choppy sentences like this one above to form a longer, more meaningful sentence. Put the idea you wish to emphasize in the main clause and use subordinate clauses and phrases to include the other ideas. So for example, even though he's not an accountant and that's that is your subordinate clause. My cousin Jan does my taxes yearly. That's the main clause right there. Suggesting various deductions that considerably reduce my tax bill. And that's your revised version. Over to you. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's do some practice now. If the sentence includes a fragment, rewrite it to eliminate the error. So I'm going to give you five minutes, then you can pause it, obviously, and I will give you your key.
Now that you have your sentences ready, let's take a look at the key. The house on the craggy hill just outside the town is haunted. Number two, because they are hairy and frightening with large pointed fangs and shiny yellow eyes, I hate spiders, no matter how small they are. Within each group, there was a wide range of features to choose from. It was difficult to choose one. Number four is correct. I will call the doctor's office during my lunch break. And number five, the last one, the sea was filled with beauty, such as sunlight illuminating the leaves in greens, golds, and reds. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. If you liked the lesson, just hit on the like button, please. If you have a friend that's studying English, please share my lesson to them. And I think we are done for today. So, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.